So I owe you guys an apology. Uh, last week, when I came home from work, to, so I work construction and I work far away from home. I, uh, I, I live in New Jersey, but I work down in Baltimore, Maryland, and I've been on a project down there for the better part of two years. And uh, I don't get to come home often. The last couple of weekends have been, uh, I've only worked five days a week. Typically I'm working six or seven days a week, which is why I've been able to make these videos. But typically when I come home, I'll come home late Friday night after work, and then I end up leaving late Saturday. So I have to get all my videoing done on Saturdays. <clears throat> Last Saturday when I came home, it was really nasty out. It was, it was cold, it was raining, and the temperature was dropping all day. And then I had a party to go to in the afternoon, so I didn't have much time. I've been having a problem with my video editing software too, so I was a little bit discouraged, I was a little bit upset with hours of time wasted making these videos and not being able to produce them. So in the end, I ended up going with a different video editing software that worked out better anyway. And that's why I was able to put the videos out. Um, but so last weekend I did do a little bit of work to the bike and I did not have the camera running again. I just wasn't in the right state of mind. I was, I was upset with, you know, a number of things. So I want to apologize. Um, but, let me show you what I did last weekend. So, I always thought about doing the cut fenders look, uh, but I wasn't really a huge fan of pictures that I had seen online. Um, <clears throat> guys, you know, they remove the racks, and I, I just think that the, the machines, forgive my speaker here, it's just kind of sitting on top. It was on the rack, I just didn't feel like I'm wiring it. So it's just kind of sitting up there, but typically guys remove the racks. I don't really love that look. Uh, it's a utility ATV. It's meant to have racks on it. So I think that they look kind of weird without racks. Um, just like, for example, in the back, I don't really like that look where the seat is like so much higher than the rest of the fenders are. So I'll throw up some pictures. I did take just a, you know, three or four pictures of, of when I was doing this, but I, uh, I taped off my line where I wanted to cut and ended up cutting the fenders. This is what I ended up with. So I did quite, uh, excuse me, I did cut quite a bit of plastic off the machine. I love the stamps from the back end, but I did want to figure out a way to make my racks work. So before I cut it, I just kind of sat and stared at the machine for about an hour and I thought, wait a minute. So if you follow this body line, if you follow this body line, right? Think about it, I'm saying, hmm. That almost follows the body line of the front rack. So I ended up taking my front rack off and laid it over the back. See what I'm seeing? All right. Huh? So if you look, the contour of the rack, of the front rack, actually follows the line of the plastic almost perfectly. So last Sunday before I left, well, Saturday, before I left for, uh, to go back down to Baltimore, um, I uh, ended up ordering myself another rack and a couple of parts, and I had already modified my front rack, let me show you guys. So what I did was I cut off the, the rear mounts on the front rack, uh, and then I cut off the mounts from the factory rear rack, cut them off so I would have something to mount them to. So these sit in this, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of welding today. And take a closer look at this, if I lay this on top. This is going to be kind of difficult to show you with one hand, but basically I think I can make the rear, the rear arms that held the factory rear rack, I think will work. Uh, I just, these little, these little mounting tabs, I think I'm going to cut them off. And if I flip them, so the angles out this way, I think it'll match up perfect with the mount on this or pretty close anyway. And I'll re-weld those. This is just some sort of a wrinkle finish. I guess it's a powder coating because it's a pretty tough coating, but 
I just got some wrinkle finish black paint for now. And uh, like I said, I ordered a new rear rack. I've got it right here. And that's going to go back on, or did I say rear rack? It's going to go back on the front. New front rack to go back on the front. And uh, yeah, so I'll take you guys along for that. I've got a set of skid plates from Ricochet Off-Road in this box here. And this also reminds me, I've got my the under fender storage compartment, which sits right there. I thought of something for that too. I didn't like the look of that just hanging down there now that you could see it, now that the lip of the fender is gone. So if I can find what I just did with these things, I picked up a couple of these aluminum discs, eighth inch aluminum. That it's gonna fit perfect to cover that up. So I think I will drill a couple of holes. I got two of them. So the plan is to sandwich this. If I, I think I've got a rivet kit with me, so I'll rivet this in and then maybe I can use this for switches or something. I'll figure it out. But I was really excited to find out that the front rack actually fits really nicely on the back and it should just be a little bit of fab work to make that happen. Shouldn't be anything crazy. I'll cut this off too so this doesn't hit you in the butt when you're riding. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I ended up doing last weekend. Today is a gorgeous Saturday here. It's like 65 degrees right now. The sun is shining, so it's going to be a good day. All right, so I'll take you guys along with me and uh, hope you enjoy it. So I ended up doing something a little bit different. I, I paused on, I started, I had started cutting this bracket off, but I, I took a pause on that. I know the camera couldn't pick it up, but the weld, so I guess the way this bracket is made is there's just a slit right here, and they fill all of that in with weld, which is actually nice because it makes it strong, but it does make it kind of a pain in the ass to cut it off without destroying the bracket. So I, I stopped there and I thought, well, let me try something different. So I had a little bit of aluminum flat bar here, some, some one inch by eighth inch thick aluminum flat bar. And I think, I, I made these little tabs and I think this is what I'm gonna do. The, uh, there's a couple reasons for this. One is this is a little bit easier than trying to cut that bracket off and, and re-weld it. But two, so if you look at the way these arms come up along the side of the storage compartment. So if I were to cut this off and remount this bracket, I would have to take this arm and raise it this way slightly to line up with that hole. Now, here's the problem with that, is look at the edge of this, look how close that is. So if I moved them up anymore, it would start interfering with the lid for the rear storage compartment. So I thought, you know what, maybe this might be a better idea. So I'm gonna try this out, I'll see how it works. They're just rough cut right now. So I'll drill some holes, I'll just probably nut and bolt that, and then uh, I'll clean up that bracket. Now on the front, I had to cut the front down. These, I had to cut these legs down a little bit more to get my level right. And let me just walk away from the machine quick. I'll show you what I've got. So I put the new rear, uh, excuse me, the new front rack on it. So I cut it down enough where I, I think that looks pretty good. The rack is about level with the seat, which is exactly what I was going for. Maybe it's just a touch above it. I don't know how well I could pick that up, but. I like the way it looks, so I think I'm going to go with that. And the other thing I did too is the hoop. The hoop on the front of this, I, I just cut that off because there's, there's no reason for that to be there on the back. It's just going to be in the way. Down here for the brackets, I think, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along this Sharpie line on both sides just for a cleaner look. And then I think I'm going to throw it in the vise and just try to squeeze this together a little bit, close this gap up some, and then I'm just gonna weld all along here to make that nice and strong. And yeah, drill it, nut and bolt it. And I think that's gonna be it for that. I've got some of that wrinkle black finish paint that I'll just paint this thing up with. And yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing. So I am going to go swap the wire out in my welder. I've got 035 wire in it now. I'm gonna go to an 025 wire just because this is pretty thin stuff. And I will get back with you guys and we will weld this up.
that's what I came up with. See how that works. So I've got it sitting kind of right where I want it. Squeeze those mounts in a little bit so it fits those a little bit better. And now I'm going to set up the welder and I'm just going to tack this thing in place and then I'll pull it off, I'll weld it solid on the floor. Now being that this is bolted to the machine you want to disconnect the negative battery uh, post just so you don't send any kind of electrical shocks through the ECU or anything so I've gone ahead and done that already so I'm just going to tack this in place and then we'll fully weld it, we'll drill these holes and yeah, we'll have our new rack. Alright, so I've got it tacked in place, so I am going to drill these holes, I'm going to pull the rack off, we'll fully weld it. So this is the welder that I've got. It's a Lincoln 210 multi-process welder. I'm running an 025 wire right now just because this is pretty thin. Uh, but my tacks are looking pretty good, so we're gonna fully weld this thing now. laid in there nice so that's a pretty good weld so I feel confident that this is going to be a nice strong mount so I've got the holes marked for my plate I'm gonna do six of them around and I think like I was saying before I'm gonna sandwich it underneath and then I think I'm gonna rivet it and maybe I can use this as a switch panel at some point or something I'm not sure, but I'll get these drilled out and we'll start riveting it together. 
just going to center punch these real quick. go sweet I'm gonna trace these onto the other one drill those and then we'll sandwich them and we'll rivet them on the machine There we go. Cover plate's all done. I like it. And here we are after. We got it painted up, got it mounted. So I'm very, very happy with that. The new front rack I put back on the front. Fix this one up. So my brackets, I just kind of shave them, make them look a little more round it off and uh, I'm happy I did that that was a good idea but yeah so that that fits really good I love the stance of this thing now I also put on some uh, skid plates while the camera was off I mean that's easy enough I didn't feel that I needed to make a video about that but she's fully skid plated now fenders are trimmed and I have a rear rack again so today was a productive Saturday. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, everybody.